Hello, we're going to do some spec today and we are going to look at consolidating speech. So just going over what we've learned this year and last year about speech and just kind of firming up our understanding of it. When you've had a little look at this video, you'll head back to Purple Mash and there are some activities and some work set there for you to complete. Think of words to replace said in the sentence below. It's freezing, Dan said. Now, said's okay, but it's not very informative. It doesn't tell us how he's feeling. And so we can use better words to put that in. Think about how he might be feeling if he is freezing, if he's very cold. Do you think he might be moaning that it's cold? Depends. Um, certainly some of the teachers at school moan when they think it's really cold around school. Um, he might be shivering, so we might be able to say, it's freezing, Dan shivered. Just a couple of examples. Have a little look at what examples are offered below here. It's freezing, Dan shouted. It's freezing, Dan exclaimed. It's freezing, Dan moaned. It's freezing, Dan declared. It's freezing, Dan groaned. Now, there's some other examples that you could have used. And if you replace said with those words, it gives a little bit more of an impact to that sentence. It gives us more of an effect and it helps the reader understand a little bit better about what's going on. Right. Identify whether the sentence below contains direct or indirect speech. So direct speech is where somebody, a character or a person, has actually spoken and these are the words that they have said that have come out of their mouths said out loud. Indirect speech is where you're saying, I spoke to Mrs Logan yesterday and she said we could have a party on Friday. Okay, they're not the words that Mrs Logan said herself. I am just repeating and recalling a conversation I had with her. So let's have a little look at these examples. I asked when we were going on holiday. That is indirect speech then, because you're just saying that you asked that question. You haven't said, I said to my mum, when are we going on holiday, mum? Which would have been direct speech. Also a good clue is to look for the inverted commas. Inverted commas are always used around direct speech, the words that have actually spoken. So A is indirect, B. In July, mum replied. So mum has actually said that. There are inverted commas there. So we can deduce from that that this is direct speech. She said we were going to Cornwall. Again, there are no inverted commas. And you're just kind of recalling what you've been told. So that is indirect speech. Tick the sentences that have been correctly punctuated. Circle any errors. My dentist said I needed a filling. Will it hurt? I asked. He told me I would be fine. I said I've never had a filling before. Right. So which of these sentences have been punctuated correctly? which have errors. So I'm just going to give you a few seconds to have a think about that. Then I'll show you the answers and we'll talk about why those answers are what they are. Okay, so let's have a little look at the answers. The first one it's you report, you're talking about indirect speech and my dentist said I needed a filling. There's no need for that comma there. You only use a comma when you're going to put some direct speech in and that would be shown with the inverted commas as well. And because there are no inverted commas there, we know there's no direct speech and that um, comma on the line is not needed. Will it hurt, I asked. Now, that's direct speech. We know that because we've got the inverted commas. After will it hurt, we've got a question mark. Now, between the speech and the rest of the sentence, inside the inverted commas, we usually have some punctuation. 
And, well, we always have some punctuation. So it could be a comma or it could be an exclamation mark. Or in this case, because it's a question, it's a question mark. So that's correct. He told me I would be fine. So the dentist has reported that you're reporting the speech that you had with this dentist. So that's indirect speech. He told me I would be fine. Absolutely fantastic. No need for inverted commas. No need for commas. I said I've never had a filling before. Now, as I suggested earlier with question two, you need something between the speech and the rest of the sentence. If the rest of the sentence comes before the speech, you need to put that piece of punctuation there. Question mark's not appropriate there. Um, neither is an exclamation mark. But what we do is before we have the speech, the direct speech in the inverted commas, we always add a comma. Okay, so it should be, I said comma, I've never had a filling before. I'm just going to look at one more example here. Alfie is converting indirect speech to direct speech. So he has converted, my dad told me to fasten my seatbelt. And now he's trying to use the direct speech. My dad said, fasten your seatbelt. Is he correct? Explain your answer. So having a little look at that, my first impression is he's got a sentence that starts with a capital letter. It ends in a full stop. He's got a comma between the speech and the rest of the sentence. And he's got inverted commas around the words he's actually say. So initially, I would say, yes, he has got it right. However, there is one thing he hasn't done. When Dad starts to speak, that's the first sentence he is saying. And he is saying a sentence, and what goes at the beginning of a sentence? A capital letter. So there's one thing missing out of here because he should have had a capital letter for fasten. And that can be confirmed here, look. So Alfie is not correct because fasten needs to begin with a capital letter. If you head on over to Purple Mash now, there are some questions for you to answer. Good luck. And just remember all of your rules about direct and indirect speech. If it's the words that somebody would actually say that you would hear coming out of their mouth, it's direct speech. Otherwise, it's most likely reported speech. Good luck, folks.